Washington, and he's written a new book called Called. The book is the book is named is titled Called to Stay an uncompromising mission to save your church. And Caleb joins us now. Caleb, good morning to you. Good morning, Tim and Lauren. Thanks for having me. Where do you live there in the state of Washington? The wonderful city of Bellingham, where it's cold almost all the time, but it's beautiful. Do you know a guy named Scott Lindsay? <laughs> He's a great friend of mine, yeah. Well, he owes me about $100. Uh, oh, I'll, t- I'll be sure to tell him that, <laughs> Caleb. And I've been—he won't answer my phone calls. So, oh man, he's a tough one. We, can you and I talk when we get off the air here? <laughs> uh, I don't want to do this on national. Okay, Tim needs a cell number. Yeah, I really need him to pay up because Christmas is coming and everything. And, no, I'm kidding. Uh, Scott Lindsay works for Logos Bible Software, which is located in Bellingham, right? That's right. I actually uh, was an intern there. We shared the same office for a few months. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, uh, that went up there last year, uh, a year ago in June. My wife, Allison, and I mentioned this before. Uh, Scott Lindsay and his lovely wife and family invited us to come up because we had never been to uh, the state of Washington before. The great Pacific. You had never been? No, I'd never been before. And uh, so we went up there. And uh, and drove from Seattle to uh, Bellingham, and then Scott lives a little bit north of that along the Canadian border. But I, uh, Caleb, I got back home to Mississippi where I live, and I, <laughs> I was like a, a person who had been on a, you know, a journey to discover new lands. And I told <laughs> I told everybody here, I said, let me tell you something. We only think we know what trees are. That's okay? right. <laughs> That's right. These trees are majestic. Those, uh, I don't know what they're, the evergreens or whatever they are. Amen. Evergreens, yes. Those things uh, just towering, uh, you know, everywhere. Anyway, it's just absolutely stunning scenery. Uh, Did it rain the way. whole time? Well, then we went from, uh, I know I know Caleb didn't get invited on the program <laughs> for me to relive my tour of uh, nor- the Northwest, but we, we did go over, we took a uh, boat, uh, a ferry to uh, Victoria, mm-hmm. and uh, that was that was it's beautiful. Oh wow! Anyway, it was it was a great time, and uh, I I thought maybe you might know, you might know Scott. Well, tell us about your book called "To Stay." Why'd you write this, Caleb? Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. Uh, you know, you see all over the headlines: millennials leaving the church, leaving the church, leaving the church, and um, you know, really, I, I wrote the book uh, kind of for my myself. I I got better to the church um, in my own. Um, just in my own situation. And so I, I wanted to write a book on how God brought me through that and just showed me bitterness in my heart and showed me that, you know, the church would only ever be as loving as I'm loving, would only be as intentional as I'm intentional. And, you know, just the simple fact that, that Christ said, this is real love, you know, that I laid down my life for you and you ought to lay down your lives for your brothers and sisters. And also, um, you know, the world's going to know you by your love for one another. And right now, um, a, a certain segment of my generation is leaving the church because they, you know, quote, don't see Jesus in the church. Mm-hmm. And really, they're being loving um, to everyone. Um, even where do more. they go? If they don't see Jesus in the church, they just go where the... I think they just don't go. What? To, yeah. Well, so you're, you know, so you're, be, you're showing your commitment to the Lord by not going to church anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> because you know, people they, are human you know, beings. That makes no sense to me. Go ahead. Again. But it's yeah. happening. And One Caleb, can you define millennials... I think a lot of people don't know if they don't have kids that are your age, but you know, we're baby boomers right? and then you have generation X and then the millennials are the generation Y, which are kids that were born from the early eighties or to the early, to early 2000, right? Yeah. You're basically looking at 18 to 35 year olds right now. And, um, you know, there's really three segments right now who are leaving. There's those who, who, who leave, um, because they've actually been hurt, you know, mm-hmm. something has happened in church, and they leave because of that. There's another group that leaves because Jesus hasn't really captured their heart. They they just want to go experience the world. They want to do sin. But the third group is what this book is really targeted at, and those are the ones who are frustrated, you know, saying, you know, this is stagnant Christianity. Uh, no one's really on fire for God. You know, it's just, it's all a front. No one's getting real. We just go to church um, because of the church. And so they start meeting with other believers who they believe are passionate, you know, at Starbucks or at, you know, their own, uh, you know, personal church, if you will. And one of the things about the book is that, 
you know, when you start cherry picking the type of believers who you you want to, you know, be with, you're kind of choosing who you want to love. You're not investing in the in the body of Christ, which is messy. Where, um, you know, I, I like to talk about the, the Great Commission has two parts. The first is therefore go, and and I think my generation really gets that. They're very mission minded. They want to redeem this world, tell people about Jesus. But also the second part of the Great Commission is, you know, teaching them to obey all I've commanded. And one of the things that I think we're neglecting to do in church and that, you know, this book is a charge to do is, hey, we need to teach each other to be like Jesus. You know, Hebrews 10, 20, 20, um, 24 and 25, don't neglect to meet, but encourage each other to love and good deeds. Forsake you know, not the assembly. Saying, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's basically saying, you know, don't neglect to be Jesus to each other. And uh, my generation really needs to um, realize that, hey, be passionate for Jesus, but the fact is that means you're going to be passionate for your local church because the local church is the expression of what God's doing in this world. And, um, hey, if you're saying that Jesus isn't in the church, guess what? You've got to be Jesus to those around you. And, um, again, it will only the, the church will only ever be as invested as you are. And so the book is really a calling to individuals to step up, be intentional in their church, and, and to love, love her as Christ loves his bride. Well, do you ever say, hey, there is a time that comes when you do need to leave a church? Yeah, there, one of the last chapters in the book is, is when to leave, and it really just goes through questions. You know, um, hey, if, if the pastor's in sin, is it, it isn't repenting, I mean, yeah, it's probably probably time to go. Or, um, you know, is it is it destroying you or your family? Is there something going on there that's, that's causing that? And I it really, it's not so much about like a formula of like when to leave. It's more like, hey, ask these questions. Where's your heart? Um, what's the spirit leading you to? And, um, you know, go through what scripture says. You know, we're supposed to honor our uh, our pastors and, and maybe don't make life horrible for them. And um, it's really, um, you know, a look inward and look at what scripture says and then uh, going on from there. But there's definitely time to leave. We know there's been abuse in the church and things like that. But and it's also a charge to, hey, if you leave, don't stay in the wilderness for long. Where does God want you? And follow, follow that leading. And don't just, don't just church hop. Don't leave because you hate the carpet or, I mean, that's a lame example, but the music or, or what have you. you know, these are not uh, deal breaker or leave the church issues. When we go to church to, to love on each other, to worship God, and um, it's not about, you know, um, whether you sing hymns or contemporary or whether, um, you know, your pastor is, is more traditional or more, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, you know, the, the today's type pastor who, you know, dresses in jeans. You know, it's it's, it's about worshiping God, contemporary. loving others. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm pretty good with that when you just ask me for words like that. Uh, You're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm in season, <laughs> out of season. <laughs> Caleb Kay, Brakey is our guest, B-R-E-A-K-E-Y. Caleb's book is, is a challenge, really. It's called, uh, the book is called Called to Stay, An Uncompromising Mission to Save Your Church. It is true that there are no perfect churches because uh, there are no, you know, it's right. made up of people. Mm-hmm. Pastors um, are human beings. Praise and yeah. worship leaders are human beings. Yeah, Youth yeah, leaders exactly. are human beings. And the people. But, um, you know, the, but the, the, I guess, uh, you know, people leave churches for various reasons. Uh, and, you, you know, you, like you say, Caleb, you know, there are legitimate reasons for, for leaving the church the, or your church. But to leave your church and then not get involved in another church that's a problem. Uh, that that's a problem. You need to check your spiritual life, folks. If you think you can go it alone, because I think that itself, Caleb, is unscriptural, isn't it? Aren't we? Supposed, no matter what generation you are, exactly. Aren't we supposed to be as Christians part of a local fellowship? I mean, isn't that isn't that uh, taught to us in the Bible? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, everything I see in Scripture points that, yes, we're supposed to be together. We're supposed to be the body, you know, um, when you come together as church and, and all the structure God forsake not the, in for, Scripture. Forsake not yeah. the gathering of the saints. Uh, mm-hmm. where, is that, where is that verse? Uh, it... Yeah, that's, a, that's a Hebrews 10. Okay, okay. Hebrews 10. Yeah. Well, and we need it. You know, we need the accountability. Right. You need the friendship. Um, we need the lesson, the life lessons that you're getting from the pastor. And the Lord honors you for keeping his word because he doesn't commission us to do something for no reason, right. to give us something else to do in the week. Right. 
Good you know, that's a, that's a really great point. One of the things I, I go into and, and like to say is like, you know, when I talk to a young person and, and trying to get through to them about this, you know, I don't tell them, you know, we stay because we've always stayed. I, I tell them we stayed for that reason, you know. Why, why does God have us here? And, you know, they might say, well, no one's real at church. You know, everyone doesn't want to, um, you know, um, talk about their spiritual life. You know, they want to talk about football and, and what they're, where they're going to eat afterward. It's or like, how well, their lives are so okay. perfect. <laughs> you yeah, know? sure. Sure. And so my encouragement is, hey, you know, when you go to church, be intentional. So commit to yourself. You know, one of the things I do is, you know, I'm going to have one good conversation with someone after church. Just to be intentional. I'm going to get into their life. I'm going to say, hey, where are you at with Jesus right now? You know, how's your heart? Um, you know, what's going on in your life? Ask follow-up questions and, and, and intentionally decide to be interruptible. Hey, is this person hurting? this person need you in any way? Can you be there for them? You know, be the body of Christ. Well, and when you're visiting be, be. churches, seek, you know, seek the face of the Lord. Visit and, and you say, Father, mm. show me which church I'm supposed to be at. I mean, in Isaiah 30, 21, he reminds us he'll tell us which way to go to the right or to the left. He'll give us direction. And he mm. does have a place he wants us to be. You know, I think mm-hmm. I think all that matters to him and mm. for, for such a time as this, where we're supposed to be today and visit different places. Don't go to a church. I mean, this is my opinion, Caleb, just because everybody else goes there. You know, mm. maybe the Lord's calling you to go to a smaller church. <laughs> you know, you don't know what he's asking of you, but when you visit, get together with your family, your friends or and pray, especially I think it's hard when kids go away to college, especially if it's not yeah. a Christian college. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. they've been going with their parents. Mm-hmm. They've been, you know, hey, my family all gets up and goes in the mornings. But then all of a sudden, they're in college. I remember I dealt with that. Mm-hmm. Well, where do I go now? Especially yeah. if you're not in a Christian university where everybody's going mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. I think that's where yeah. the breakdown might start, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, sometimes, you know, they go to college and then people start asking questions and um, saying things. And, and things get skewed really fast. Um and, and again, one of the things I, I wanted to do in this book was I just want what does Scripture say about this? What is what is staying all about? And and just all throughout Scripture, we see it's about giving your lives to, to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. Um, and also, one thing I wanted to to mention for for you and all your listeners is if anyone shoots me an email at my address, calebrakey at gmail dot com, I would love to send them the audio book and video series and a bunch of other free um, resources. Oh, that would be wonderful. Uh, what is your email? Yeah. What did you just my, offer? What is your email? My email is calebbrakey at gmail.com. It's just my name straight across lowercase. And again, I'll give them the entire audiobook, video series, and um, several other, um, you know, leader questions, all that. I'll give it all for free um, if someone just shoots me an email. B-R-E-A-K-E-Y is Caleb's last name. Hey, Caleb, thank you, my friend. Take care. Thank we you appreciate so much for you. having me. I really appreciate it, Tim and Lauren. Have a great day.